Hi, my name is Reed, and this is part two of a tutorial that is intended for teachers who are completely new to Minecraft EDU and have no prior experience uh, with this learning tool. In the previous tutorial, we looked at some of the Minecraft EDU uh, building tools that could be taken advantage of, and uh, basically how to maneuver inside a tutorial world or a super flat world. In this tutorial, we're going to look more at other world generation options. So I'm going to go ahead and click Minecraft EDU Launcher and start the server launcher. And create new world. Now the last time uh, we created a new world, um, we just started server with new world and that was on a completely flat world. That was where the landscape was very barren. Um, there's not a lot going on. It does not put um, anything in context. Some of the other options that you have for choosing world types are to generate a random world. Um, and it gives you these world settings such as generating structures or creating animals. Um, for me, I typically don't generate structures just because I feel there's a um, certain um, uh, like fantastical element in some of these dungeons and mine shafts, mine shafts and villages that uh, could distract my kids from the true learning outcomes or the tasks that I have set forth uh, in this engagement. So I, I typically don't check them uh, at first. Uh, just generating a random world and start server with a new world. And just waiting for the server to start up. And then you can go ahead and start Minecraft EDU and launch. And once it opens up, you can go ahead and type your name and continue. Multiplayer, direct connect. Check to make sure the server is ready and the address matches. And then type in your teacher password. Now this is a randomly generated world, so I do not know what type of world I'm going to appear within. Uh, first thing I can do for you is to make the screen a little bit bigger and go back to game. And whenever I begin in a a randomly generated world. I will go ahead and move into the teacher menu, click on creative mode so I can fly around and increase my movement speed. And then just double tap on the space bar and have a fly around. And just check out the world, see what landscape has generated. Uh, is, this, is this a landscape where my students can easily move around in? Will they be able to see the bigger picture are there any potential distractions? Um, sometimes if you are in a very forested area or a very mountainous world, it can be very difficult for students to move around, to see each other, and it requires a lot of uh, chopping down of trees in order for them to build anything. Uh, this randomly generated world, at least this area over here, um, has some um, topography, um, but it also is flat. So there might be some uh, potential for building in this area. You'll have to make a, an evaluative decision as a teacher as to whether or not uh, this world might be beneficial to what your learning intentions are. Uh, to get out of a world, go ahead and hit escape and then disconnect and then quit game. Right, and stop the server and quit because I have not made any modifications. And then go back into Restore Launcher, click on Server Launcher once again, Create New World. So we've just witnessed what you can do to generate a random world. A lot of this is trial and error. Uh, some worlds are going to be great and some worlds are not going to be the best for learning. So um, this is an option if you just want to see what's out there and what the uh, random generation comes up with. Uh, generate a world from a seed. 
You can see when I click generate world from a seed, there uh, is a world setting that comes up down here where you can use world seed. Uh, if I go onto a website that I have attached into the starter kit in my blog, um, just Minecraft Seeds, it gives an overview of uh, different seeds that, that people have uh, generated and would like to share with the greater world. Uh, if you want to find out more about what seeds are, I trust this source. Don't trust a rookie like me. Um, all I know is that it's a string of numbers that generates a certain world. Uh, so in this case, there are some seeds here. If I click on this one, the uh, author has given a quick uh, synopsis and overview of, of what the world has to offer. Uh, what I can do is just copy this seed and then come back into the world seed key and then paste that seed and then start the server. And essentially every time that you use that seed it'll bring you into the same world. So again, once the server is ready, I can restore launcher and jump into Minecraft EPU and launch. Enter your name and continue. Multiplayer, direct connect, join server, and teacher password. So this is a world that has been generated by uh, that seed, that string of numbers. And you can see that when you spawn into this world, um, there is a lot of flora around. It can be kind of hard to move. Um, just because you're running into different bushes and you're going to need to jump up. Um, again, one, uh, the first thing that I do when I'm in a new world, uh, aside from making this bigger for you, is get into creative mode and have a fly around just to see what the world has to offer. I can see here that uh, this seed generates uh, a few distinct biomes that uh, might not match up in the real world, um, but could be used for a potential lesson on uh, maybe shelters constructed out of natural resources or uh, human adaptations that might need to occur within uh, bordering or differing biomes. Um, so this is a, another way that you can check out a few different worlds that um, the others have shared uh, through the internet is uh, just find a seed and see what's out there. Again, I can disconnect and quit game and stop that server. I'm going to quit. I have not made any modifications. Go back into the server and we'll take a look at another option. Uh, this final option uh, generate a completely flat world. In the first tutorial, I just went ahead and clicked start server with new world. Uh, that was a very barren and desolate, empty world, a uh, super flat world. One of the things that you see down here is there uh, is the ability to customize a world code. Um, I am still trying to figure a lot of this out, but there is a uh, a resource that I have found called Chunkbase, and there are a few other resources out there that have been uh, sporadically functioning for me, where you can generate your own world based on your preferences, and it gives you some options such as layers, biomes, and features. Now the layers refer to the ground level. Um, you can keep your eye up here on this code, and then uh, you can alter the code um, just by clicking up or down on the number of layers that you want, um, in this case, I'm just going to leave the, the layer uh, quite basic like that. I don't uh, intend my students to be building any cave systems or mining anything at this point. Most of their interaction is going to be done on the surface, so I'm more concerned with the environment that they are operating within. Uh, now, there are a lot of biomes here. Some of these biomes do generate worlds. 
uh, other biomes don't. I can't figure out which ones do and for what reason and why. Uh, it's a lot of trial and error, but I have had uh, moderate success um, checking some of these biomes out in order to provide a, uh, a context for um, where students are, are interacting within the world and make it more lifelike. I find that these super flat world uh, without a horizon, without flora, without fauna, without topography or other living things uh, doesn't make it seem uh, so realistic. Um, features, you can add a few features. Again, some of these are more fantastical. Um, others are more uh, realistic and lifelike. So I try to keep on water uh, lakes and decorations to see if um, water sources can be generated and anything else that uh, is more um, more real and lifelike, such as plants and trees, uh, depending on the biome. So uh, for this uh, example, I'm going to try, um, let's see, a, a swamp land. Um, so we'll try this swamp land here uh, to see if um, this code might function within um, the customized world code area. So again, I can go ahead and copy the code, come back here into starting a server, and then paste that code in and start server with a new world. Again, sometimes uh, these generators work, sometimes they don't. I am not an expert by any means, so I am just learning this as I go along. If anyone knows more uh, about how to do this properly, please leave a comment. Um, it would help us all out greatly. You can go ahead and start Minecraft EDU again and then launch. And go ahead and type your name. Multiplayer, direct connect, join server, teacher, and password. And we'll see if any world is generated here. It doesn't look like a world is going to be generated. Uh, again, this is one of the things I, I haven't uh, completely figured out yet. Um, in which case I'll go back and try a new biome or a new combination of coding uh, to see if, if that works. So connection was lost, I'll go back to the title screen, I'll just quit the game, stop the server, and go back in. And while we're going back in, I'll select a different biome. Maybe I'll try this swamp land. And I'll copy the code, go to create new world, generate a completely flat world with a customized world code, paste it in, and start server with a new world. We'll wait for the server to start up. Once it has, go ahead and click start Minecraft EDU and launch. It will prompt you once again to type in your name. Multiplayer, direct connect, join server, teacher, password, and we'll see if we can log in. This one appears to be working. Okay. Looks to be a uh, more usable biome. I can see that I can move around a little bit more freely. There's some space. I can see further off into the distance and the horizon. Click the teacher menu, get into creative mode. Increase the movement speed and just take a look at whether or not I feel this biome might work for where I want my students learning within. 
This biome seems like it is uh, a little bit better for my students. There's more space. They could possibly uh, begin harvesting these trees. Um, and there's a lot of good provocations that uh, could come out of uh, how many trees we might want to cut down and for what reasons do we need to cut them down, looking at sustainability and, uh, and economic value and, and concepts of that sort. So I can disconnect, quit game, and stop the server. I did not make any modifications, so I can go ahead and quit. Okay. Getting back into Restore Launcher. And we've now looked at the tutorial world. We've now looked at the three options for creating a world, generating a random world, where you shake the dice and things might work out. Uh, generating a world from a seed, you know a little bit more about what you're going to get, but there's still a lot to explore. Generating a completely flat world, a super flat world where there is no context or um, adding some code um, and customizing that super flat world to provide a little bit more self-direction in the biome that you are looking for and what you think your students might benefit from. Uh, the other options are uh, selecting a saved world. Now if inside these created worlds, if I had made any modifications, any progress, built any border walls, or added any information blocks, uh, what I could do is save, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit, um, and then inside select save worlds you would find that file name. Uh, so in this case these are some worlds that my students, the, the world that I had initially created for my students and, and some of the progress that they've been making over the past few days. Uh, so we'll open up this one, the template. Now you won't have any saved worlds in that section unless you already have created new worlds and saved them on your own. And now we can start Minecraft EDU and launch. And type in your name. And same thing as always. And you can see this is uh, an escape maximize that game. Well, I can't fly yet. It's because I have not enabled it in the teacher menu. Hit P for the teacher menu. Creative mode movement speed. Uh, I can double tap on the space bar and you can see that this is the uh, the template world that I had created for my students. Uh, I had used that chunk base super flat generator um, to I believe choose a river biome with uh, lakes and decorations and uh, I don't know exactly how it happened but it, it, it did come up like this and I was happy enough with it because it provided uh, some real life to this world that I felt were, were, was, was missing in some of the other worlds. A lot of uh, water sources and, and trees. And you can see that I have also um, scattered some of these information blocks around the world so that uh, when students are moving around and they see an information block, they might come up and right click on it and then they will see one of the related concepts that we've been focusing on. Um, one of the things that I have noticed is if you try to copy and paste text into these information blocks, they don't always um, come out the way that you have intended them to. Um, what I, and this was a complaint from one of my students, uh, they said it was very hard to read some of the uh, information blocks just because the words were broken up and they weren't really hyphenated. You can see here that um, there's spaces where there uh, don't need to be spaces. Uh, so it is better to type in the text directly rather than copying and pasting. Um, here's the spawn point I created and then you can also see the border wall 
um, that I've built around this area, uh, strategically incorporating some trees and lakes that students felt that uh, they were going to take advantage of the natural environment to do so. Uh, so once I, I built this world using the super flat generator, um, I spent uh, quite a bit of time building this border wall and laying down some of these information blocks that uh, acted as provocations and reflections for students. Um, and then I, uh, sorry, uh, what you can do is if you want to uh, save uh, any progress that you've made in a world, you can just come up here, name the map, and then save the map. Now, uh, I'm not going to save it um, in this instance, but if you wanted to show the progress that was happening in the world uh, over time, you would have to create a different file name for each, um, each map. Um, so in this case, I'm going to disconnect, quit game, and then stop the server, quit, and I'll uh, very quickly show you some of the progress that has been made by my students so far in the past four days. So I'm going to select a saved world, and I had showed you the template where students had initially been introduced to the world to see the landscape. Um, and about four days later, um, they've made a little bit of progress in this uh, assignment. They are tasked with creating a society that is built using systems and functions around systems. And we can begin to see what some of my students have been building in the last four days. We have um, a church, uh, what looks to be a library. I believe some students who um, are, are working on some of these systems have decided to room together and live together. All over here, uh, let me speed up my movement a little bit. Um, we have students who created a restaurant. Uh, this is going to be a, some students' um, homes. Uh, we have an airport uh, that some students are working on. Uh, I cannot remember what this is. It might be the bank. Um, we have a, a park system here, uh, an apartment complex, a hotel with swimming pool. Uh, this is the beginning of a hospital that students are working on. Um, one student is working on a courthouse here. Uh, we have a farm, um, and the farm is selling some of its produce at this local store. Uh, an animal shelter. Uh, this student, uh, I believe, is building a supermarket. Uh, we have a town hall uh, where students uh, can move and discuss items of importance. We have a school that students are working on, and one of the requests that came out um, of our, our communal meetings inside uh, the classroom uh, was that the students did not want some of the information blocks spread out throughout their space because it felt like it was hampering their creative design. So they requested that uh, we create a, um, like a related concept zone so students can come and click on uh, some of these concepts and visit this area maybe once a day and uh, reflect on some of the concepts that are inherent in this activity. Um, so, uh, I hope this uh, tutorial uh, has helped you out a little bit and given you a place to start. Uh, if you have any questions uh, for the time being, don't ask me because I'm not an expert and I'm just relaying what I have recently learned in the past two weeks on to you. So, good luck, enjoy, and thanks for listening.